it's true when literally anyone can do it. I have mm -hmm. sometimes I have 11 year olds and 65 year olds in a class. Welcome to the Team Look Fit Roundtable. I'm your host, Lauren Conlon. Each week, we share the evidence-based practices and communication-driven strategies we use with our clients to help you look, feel, and perform your best. This week, I'm joined by Coach Karina. Hey, guys. And we're going to be talking all about training for a CrossFit competition because you just did your second one. Mm -hmm. And I thought, and of course, we've like talked about it like intertwined at, like, in different podcasts, but I thought it would be really good to kind of go through the whole you know, transition to like why you started, like what you did at the beginning, any changes to like training and diet, and then also just like literally training for the competitions and your experience. Because we have a lot of clients now who will ask you about it, um, whether it's just CrossFit in general or specifically doing a competition. Uh, and we wanted to just talk all about that. So I'm super excited. Yeah, me too. Uh, um, I, yeah, I, I love it so much. Um, yeah, I, I get this question a lot with individuals who might be also kind of transferring from maybe a bodybuilding powerlifting background and are just looking for something different mm -hmm. to kind of spice things up and i would say that was definitely my case and it can be pretty intimidating confusing to kind of figure out okay like how do i get into crossfit how do i reach out to a box like what are maybe quote unquote some prerequisites to being you know decent at crossfit and so um, i'm super excited to talk about all those things and maybe give some pointers and tips to help individuals who want to maybe just try crossfit out or make that transition to do so yeah so first let's talk about that like why did you start crossfit i think i decided that i really wanted to give it a go when we were actually like eight weeks out from my show mm -hmm. my last show I'm like I remember. um yeah i was i think i was just pretty burnt out from mm -hmm. dieting so much at that point. I mean, my dieting history is not the best, so that definitely didn't help. But I remember watching the Netflix documentaries. I think that's a, like a uh, entryway for a lot of people. Like, oh, I watched the, the gateway drug. Yeah, <laughs> I watched a documentary on Netflix and now I have to do this. And so I remember watching the documentaries a few weeks out from show, just feeling so dead, so depleted. And I was kind of like, man, I miss feeling like an athlete, like powerful, fast, because I grew up playing soccer and, and running track and swimming and doing cross country. So I was a bit more, my background was performance based. Um, don't get me wrong, I loved bodybuilding at one point and I loved training hard for bodybuilding, but when it came to actual competition day, I missed performing on competition day. So that's what really kind of uh, attracted me to CrossFit was a watching those documentaries and thinking man you have to be good at a whole host of things in this sport to actually be competitive that seems really fun and really exciting and so I I really liked the facet of having to be a truly well-rounded athlete um, CrossFit is essentially composed of three main pillars so there's strength um, cardiovascular fitness and aerobic capacity and then uh, the third part is gymnastics. So you essentially have to. <laughs> I'm like, I'm out. <laughs> what? Oh, I'm like, I'm <laughs> I'm like, is that happen? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so they call CrossFit, quote unquote, the three headed monster. So you have to, um, you know, have a foot in all three regions uh, aerobic capacity or cardiovascular fitness, strength, and gymnastics, which um, has been a lot of fun in learning those three. So. When you said in the beginning, okay, it can be really intimidating to, um, you know, find a gym and all that. So yeah, what are those first steps? So if somebody has either watched a documentary, they're listening to this, or they see other CrossFit athletes, and they're like, all right, what is the next thing we need to do? And and the one thing with CrossFit is that there's not a lot of standardization with each box, right? right yeah. So. Um, I got super lucky that yeah. my first box is like <laughs> the best. I've been to some boxes that are not so great, and I think that's might that might be where CrossFit gets a bad rap from. For sure, like they just let people progress in ways that they should not progress, and that's how they get injured, or you know they have the worst form and all those things. Mm -hmm. And I I really love my box CrossFit in Fuego, located in Lando Lakes, Tampa. I don't go there anymore, but that was my first box. Those, they kind of like raised me as a CrossFit athlete um, and I would highly recommend it if you're local 
but yeah i got super lucky and you're right there isn't much standardization when i first got into crossfit or was really interested into learning how to be good at crossfit um i did research and crossfit is not cheap <laughs> so i know really that's what's also frustrating yeah. is like if you sign up for a gym yeah and they're either like pushing like you to do a lot when like maybe you're not ready or they're just like yeah just go run all the time you know you're like okay yeah hey, i don't really need to pay all this money to like not really yeah. have training programming right. and just be doing like metcons constantly yeah yeah so again i think i got super lucky with having a good box there are a lot of good boxes in tampa there are a few that are good in orlando i haven't been to you know many um, other than tampa and orlando but how i started knowing that crossfit was pretty expensive i didn't want to pay um, an on-ramp fee. So what a lot of CrossFit boxes will do is they'll say, hey, before you can take part in any of our classes, you have to do an on-ramp program. An on-ramp program is typically where you are like working one-on-one -on -one with someone and they're walking you through Olympic barbell movements, some gymnastic stuff. Obviously you can't learn all those things in a week, but they're walking you through the basics. I'm a little bit cheap and so I thought you know I don't want to pay and usually that first fee is like three hundred dollars four hundred dollars for like three or four in-person sessions CrossFit is not a cheap sport um, but so with that with knowing that I thought I can just learn a lot of things on YouTube because I have uh, quite a bit you have enough athletic background. yeah I so I would say maybe not for everybody but yeah. for you that was an easy transition yeah for me <laughs> I spent um, quite a few months just teaching myself a lot of movements um, on YouTube. And you took some classes, right? Yes. Yeah. So I did a few in-person one-on-one classes with an Olympic weightlifting coach because I knew for me that was going to be the hardest thing to overcome along with gymnastics. But I feel like that was that was where the biggest risk for me to get injured was so it's important for me to prioritize okay i really want to know how to do this to make sure i don't get injured luckily i've been doing crossfit for almost two years now i don't really have any injuries and i think that simply comes from having an athletic background knowing how to move my body through space and then taking that time to go really slowly in the beginning and then work one-on-one -on -one with an olympic weightlifting coach um, for a few sessions and they just really walked me through some things and that was super helpful. Mm -hmm. So after I did a few months on my own just learning stuff on YouTube and a few classes in person with an Olympic lifting weight coach, Olympic weight lifting coach, sorry, <laughs> Olympic, Olympic weight Olympic. coach, <laughs> Olympic weight lifting coach, um, I decided to join a box and that's where I really started to get used to the Metcon structures and things like that. and. Um, that's where I really started falling in love with the sport because uh, I'm just a competitive athlete by nature and so like each class you're competing because it's a class and so you want to beat everybody. <laughs> you want to like do well but you also kind of want to win. So or at least that's how I am. Um, and so yeah, that's kind of how I got into it. Uh, I, I also did quite a few Metcons at home to try to see if it was something that I enjoyed and liked. Mm -hmm. um, there is a website, it's called CompTrain Co. So CompTrain.co. They post free wads every day. Uh, there's a lot of free wads on the internet in general, but I really like CompTrain structure because they also provide a strength training piece, a conditioning piece, a Metcon piece, and then if you wanna do some extra accessory work, <clears throat> they have that option for you. So I use that for free for a little bit to kind of get used to the structure of CrossFit, get used to the movements, and that really helped me. Um, I'm trying to think of what else, but yeah, that, that was pretty much it over time. I just, you know, kept practicing and saved money and- <laughs> Yeah, I would- uh, Yeah, again, you have a very extensive background in not only like other sports, but yeah. particularly lifting. So even though the crossover isn't a hundred percent, there's still going to be a crossover of like understanding, like yeah. you have the basic mechanics of like, you know how to squat, like, you know what yeah. like good form is. Um, a lot of people go into CrossFit or Olympic weightlifting, like with, with no idea no how to squat, squat, which is what, which is, that's always been my hang up with CrossFit is that yeah. there isn't necessarily like there's not always a delineation there, right? And maybe some, obviously there's gonna be certain places that are better than others as far as like yeah. the coaching and the one-on-one that they offer. Um, but a lot of times it just feels like, hey, here's the workout and like 
fucking have at it. Yeah. Right. I think if you're someone who doesn't have a background, that on ramp period and that one on one mm-hmm. is going to be super useful and really beneficial. And I'm I sure that's a, a thing that you can continue to add on. Yeah. Right. Like, hey, Absolutely. if you really like your one and like coach right like yeah. can i have a session uh, where we go over whatever like you might be struggling with yeah. some gyms do that not all gyms i really think a lot of gyms should do that oh um, okay yeah i feel like that should be like a staple <laughs> yeah n- no not all gyms do that which makes it tough and i think that's that's where crossfit gets its bad rap that's where mm-hmm. a lot of people get injured is you know ego takes over they try to do yeah. things that maybe they're not ready for like you said you're competitive right and it doesn't right. matter yeah you can be a, a low level competitive person but you put yourself in that environment yeah loud music everybody's like all like jacked yeah. up like you want to perform even if you don't necessarily know what you're doing yeah and that that, that happens in every aspect you know what i mean and Absolutely. i mean that happens to me literally when i go to like yoga classes which is yeah. like the least competitive thing yeah. but i'm just a psychopath so yeah i will like find myself just because i'm in this setting like oh i have to do this more and yeah. even if i'm like i don't fucking know what i'm doing at all and i'm like okay hey this is not the point <laughs> i'm yeah. not trying to get hurt here you know what i mean but like it's so easy so i can only imagine in that kind of a setting with like yeah. the music and the group and there's like all the camaraderie and like you know you're just trying to push yourself yeah. and it's not a bad thing it's a really really good thing but there does need to be a level of like understanding okay how am i training like what are these movement patterns um yeah or if you're doing you know a goblet squat and then you're going to go run like okay not a big deal you're doing some of these like olympic lifts yeah. and you're very tired and then you're going to another movement that's like another big like compound handstand movement. push-ups yeah. and you land on your neck yeah. like yeah that that's not good I, I mean and i've seen it happen before i will say the good thing with crossfit is that it's true when literally anyone can do it. I have mm-hmm. sometimes I have eleven year olds and sixty five year olds in a class because um, most CrossFit boxes will provide a ton of scaled options. Mm-hmm. So you have, <clears throat> excuse me. So you have a ton of different ways to complete the workout that is still somewhat similar to the objective mm-hmm. of the workout. So that's another thing I, I love about CrossFit. But um, me being me, I want to be able to. <laughs> Like what's all the, the time. hardest one? I want to do this immediately. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's what definitely been me in the butt before, but are there typically like is there like a trial period? Like what would be some? Obviously, when you go to a regular gym, you you walk in and you decide based on the equipment. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But like in CrossFit, all the equipment's pretty much the same. Yeah. <laughs> so like, obviously, it comes down to the head coach and the programming and all of that. So, um, would you recommend people who are like super novice to this to maybe like try a week, try a month? Like what's like when you get a good feel for that. Yeah, I will, that's one thing I was gonna mention is definitely try a bunch of different boxes out. Before I committed to my favorite CrossFit box or gym, however you wanna call it, um, I, I tried a bunch out and I talked to the coaches and I talked to the other members of the gym. I think that's huge to mm-hmm. kind of yes. get their feedback and their perspective on how they like the program and programming and all of those things. Um, but I would definitely recommend if you can get like a, a week trial or um, I don't, I haven't been to a lot of gyms that offer a week free. Again, CrossFit is Yeah, or you can pay. I mean, yeah. it's not a bad thing to pay yeah. for a week. I, I would definitely try, out, try it out for at least a month mm-hmm. and then yeah, kind of see right. because CrossFit is so different Mm -hmm. and and varying so not every class is going to be the same not every week is going to be the same you know some gyms might be in a more um cardio heavy training Mm -hmm. block and then they'll transfer over to more like a specific gymnastics movement or specific strength movements etc um so i definitely give a gym at least you know two weeks to a month try mm-hmm. to see okay I, I really like this gym i like the coaches definitely talk to other people who have been there i think that's a really good piece of advice because yeah. talking to members you know obviously that the gym owner could like have perfected his like right. pitch or her pitch right yeah. but like that everybody there is like miserable and everybody's leaving yeah. or whatever but like when you actually talk to people who are there every day yeah that's really important same thing with any any type of I think of that like with jujitsu, right? Yeah. Like there's so many gyms and they're all very different, yeah. right? Like there's not a lot of cohesiveness. Like there's obviously like the main moves that everybody learns, but every gym is a little bit different, right? There's some like competition only gyms. There's some like super, super serious gyms. And there's other yeah. ones that are like more laid back, like the one that we have. And like yeah. for me, like that's exactly what I wanted. Like I did not want to walk into, for me, where what I'm doing in my life in this period of time, like I was not trying to go to like 
this cutthroat like we're doing competitions only like your you know type yeah. gym like that was just not my style like I'm a very much like a hobbyist yeah. so going there and like getting to know everybody and like talking to other people like was super important and just like seeing the style mm -hmm. um that was so so key so yeah. yeah and that was a really good point too that you made about the training block because it's just like anything like when you're jumping into a training block right like our training yeah. program like body blueprint every month is a little bit different so like yeah you could jump into a month that is you know, you're not really yeah, sure what it's going to be like at the end of, for, yeah. yeah, or the beginning of something. And obviously that type of training is going to benefit the people who've been in it the longest, right. but you got to start, you know, and like, you can't, you can't yeah. just write it for like always new people. You have to write it for the people who've been doing it. Um, so that could seem, you'd be like, oh my God, these people only do cardio here. But it's like, okay, no, that was just like that week that or those two weeks. Block, yeah. Um, and that'll change. So yeah, I feel really bad for the people who join in on a CrossFit <laughs> day and it's like run two miles. I promise it's not just running <laughs> like oh, just that day. <laughs> oh great. Yeah. Um, and then there's some options too, which maybe I'm wrong, but like you can just get like the programming, but you can do it on your own. Or do you always have to do it like there? Is that like an option? Um, I'm, I'm not sure. Okay. I think some gyms offer like online programming. Yeah, like they send you the, like if you can't get to the main class, can you just yeah, do it? Yeah, yeah. I know my, my gym, so a lot of gyms will put their programming on an app where mm -hmm. you can record your results and then you might retest that workout okay. a few months later, etc. And so you don't always have to be in a gym. Um, my gym is amazing and I, even though I don't go there anymore, <clears throat> excuse me, I have access to all the workouts every single day. So I just do them in my garage gym at home, um, which has been awesome. But some gyms will, um, put the workouts on like a Wattify app mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, and then as soon as you are not part of that gym anymore, they'll take you off the page, which kind of sucks. <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, that's why my gym is the best. Um, <laughs> anyways, but So yeah. what does a typical training split look like? And obviously this is gonna be very different, but like kind of going yeah. through those pillars, like what would somebody expect if they wanted to make this transition to CrossFit type training? Like what are you kind of getting into? Yeah, so if you want to be decent um, and a well-rounded CrossFit athlete, uh, you're pretty much, most of your workouts are going to be broken down into three components most days, not every day. Uh, it'll essentially start out with a strength piece and then it'll be followed by a conditioning piece. Um, usually that strength piece is, you know, just working on squat strength, deadlift strength, overhead press, um, and then that'll be further kind of classified into, okay, this is going to be an Olympic lifting day or just going to be a general strength day, which is a bit more geared toward like the general like power lifting movements and overhead press. We don't bench in CrossFit mm -hmm. in competition really ever. I mm -hmm. mean, sometimes they do. So we don't bench in CrossFit very often in training, which I love because I hate benching, <laughs> but I really like overhead pressing. And so the, the CrossFit total, so the powerlifting total is squat, bench, deadlift. The CrossFit total is squat, deadlift, overhead press. So we do a lot more overhead pressing, um, but so a training day might look like starting with a strength piece, then followed by a conditioning piece and followed by a gymnastics piece. Sometimes that conditioning and gymnastics piece will be switched up, but typically you can um, break up CrossFit training days into three pieces, which I really like because I'm doing something different every day. Mm -hmm. I'm attending to different aspects of my fitness every single day. I'm not, you know, just squat, bench, and deadlifting for eight months straight. You know, I'm not just running all the time or just doing cardio. That's essentially how you can expect most cardio, or sorry. When you say gymnastics, like what is, what is a typical gymnastics look like? So a lot of the gymnastics movements in CrossFit are mainly like body weight focused. Mm -hmm. So anything body weight focused, they'll also throw double unders into mm -hmm. gymnastics training. So most of the gymnastics movements in CrossFit include handstand walking, handstand push-ups, anything on a rig, so pull-ups, toes to bar, muscle-ups, um, rope climbs. So any anytime you're not with a dumbbell or a barbell or running, we consider it as gymnastics. And for the most part, you'll mainly see walking on our hands, standing on our hands, or doing handstand push-ups, and then anytime we're on the rig, pull-ups, toes to bar, muscle-ups. And then, oh, I forgot, also forgot to mention, 
A really cool part of the strength component of CrossFit is they actually do a lot of strongman stuff as well. Mm -hmm. So um, yoke carries, uh, atlas stone carries, um, do ball bag like throwovers and all those things. That's why I love CrossFit because it's just like, oh, I can also do some strongman stuff. Um, so sometimes in that strength piece, instead of your normal powerlifting movement or your Olympic lifting movement, they'll throw in some strongman stuff or um, odd object movements. Odd, odd object, I like that. Yeah. Is that like the sandworm? <laughs> yes, yeah, so that's, that's or like, just the worm that I can I continuously call the sandworm. Yeah, everyone was the like, sandworm. It's not the sandworm. Oh, yeah. I was like, it's the worm, it's full of sand. It's full of sand. The workout is a worm workout. Yeah, and so um, in, like for example, a lot of times in the CrossFit games, they'll always have an odd object movement um, as one of the events and it's usually like the pig and it's just this giant soft box that's like 300 pounds Sand people just have to flip over <laughs> over and over again uh, so yeah i mean it's not always so fun annoying. but yeah so that's essentially what, going back to the gymnastics component yeah anytime you're not you're not doing load. like you're not doing like what's on the olympics gymnastics stuff. right no you're not but. no i mean we do <laughs> do rings and yeah. rigs but we're you're not doing like the horse thing yeah. you're not you're like, like tumbling yeah. no there's no tumbling in crossfit <laughs> just in case anybody was yeah. like wait i haven't seen that yet but there's maybe, no tumbling there's no splits <laughs> i mean who knows where the sport is going to be in another 10 years it's gotten pretty crazy yeah but yeah we can look at gymnastics as anytime around the rig upside down with a jump rope or climbing a rope. Okay. And what dietary changes, if any, have you made um, to, like, obviously we're not talking about at the end of a competition prep, like right. clearly that's a big change, but like, do you notice anything different that really helps with training or Yeah, so with, not? yeah, with CrossFit training, just because the intensity is typically a lot higher than what I used to do with bodybuilding, because you're just really mainly focusing on strength with CrossFit. It's a lot of hit style workouts. Mm -hmm. It's strength mixed in with a lot of um, anaerobic cardiovascular more training. Glycogen depleting. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I would say the biggest change has been really being way more diligent about my sodium intake and my electrolyte balance because you, I sweat so much more. Mm -hmm. um, also, most CrossFit boxes don't have AC, so you sweat way more than when you're at like LA Fitness or Powerhouse or something like that. Um, and then I, I eat way more carbs because I, I can definitely feel it if I'm not diligent about my carbohydrate intake pre or intra workout. I tend to like hit a wall um, in the middle of a Metcon and it doesn't feel good. So I would say the biggest change has been a, much, a heavier reliance on carbohydrates to perform and just being a lot more diligent about making sure I'm getting plenty of sodium, potassium, and magnesium so I'm not running the risk of cramping in the middle of a workout because I sweat so much. Yeah, when we think about utilizing carbs as a, um, you know, more physique focused, right, a lot of that, part of that is performance, right? Like, right. inevitably when your carbs are too low, performance is going to suffer. But after a certain point, the amount of carbs that you're having isn't just from a performance perspective, it's really just from a body comp change perspective. Yeah. Um, whereas with CrossFit, because it is performance-based and more glycogen depleting, it right. really is like essential, not just for like yeah. how you're going to look afterwards and like what changes you're gonna to see to your physique. It really is about that exact performance. Like it's just, it's just very, very yeah. different. Yeah, and the time in which you deplete glycogen is so much quicker in much CrossFit, faster. just because you're typically doing a yeah. lot more volume, um, so that, yeah, I would say the biggest change has been, and that's been really good for me also in terms of my relationship with food, whereas mm -hmm. because I've always kind of been, um, it's been super easy for me to put on weight. I'm a little bit more carb sensitive. Um, it's been really good for me to be a bit more comfortable with eating more carbs and uh, following a CrossFit training protocol mm -hmm. as well. And how many days a week are you typically training? Uh, right now, five. Okay. And how long are the workouts usually? Usually, they take me when I'm completing all three components, a strength piece, a conditioning piece, and a gymnastics training piece, uh, an hour and a half <laughs> to two oh. hours. That's by myself, right? Okay. So most CrossFit classes, you can get everything done within an hour. Um, typically, Metcons, the conditioning piece, 
will take anywhere from eight minutes to 30 minutes. And usually the extra 30 minutes of the class are working on some strength components, some gymnastics component, etc. Okay, so if somebody was to go to a gym, yeah. they could expect to dedicate an hour and I mean, you can go as many days as you want, yeah. but probably four to five is probably adequate. Yeah, I would say with where I am at in my life right now, I'm really thankful for CrossFit because I haven't been able to train as long mm -hmm. as I would like, but because I can get a really good workout in in 45 minutes with how busy I am, it's been perfect. Like mm -hmm. I've been able to maintain a body composition I'm super comfortable in and, and all of those things. So I would say it's definitely beneficial for someone who might be super busy and you just want to get a really quick, good mm -hmm. workout in. Um, you can do so in under an hour when you go to an actual gym. Yeah, and most of the times, I mean, I've, obviously every gym is going to be different, but a lot of them are either very early or there's like maybe an afternoon class and then maybe like a nighttime. So it works out pretty well for most people's like life schedule to, to take the classes Yeah. based um, on like a normal work schedule. Yeah, and I've been to over in my year and a half of doing CrossFit, I've been to over 10 different boxes because um, I travel a lot and always try to jump in somewhere. But I, um, they usually are as early as 5 to 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. all throughout the day, mm -hmm. um, all the way up until 7, 8 p.m. for the most part. So, you know, it's you have all kinds of options. And a lot of gyms do open gym as well. So you don't have to be oh, part nice. of the class. Okay, that's good. Yeah, if you don't want to be in a class or say you want to do- I've yeah, always wondered about that. Yeah, if you want to do a Metcon with the class and you want to do strength and gymnastics on your own, you can go during open gym hours. Okay. Yeah, I was traveling, when I was in Colorado, there was just like not any good gyms there. Like y'all need to get it together. I <laughs> it's just like, it's a very like active culture. Isn't but there like an arm burst? Pro gym? Yes, that's in that's outside of Denver, oh. but um, that's really like the only like in all of Colorado. In all of Colorado. Probably not. everybody probably listening is like no 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 there's this gym, but yeah. especially in Colorado Springs there wasn't shit for gyms. Yeah, and um, I get it. Like there's a lot of hiking and it's like very just like outdoor kind of yeah. focus, which is fine. But your girl needs to lift, so yeah. I was the rocks. Yeah. <laughs> in the wild. <laughs> I'm just like over pressing like rocks on my like climb, um, but. <laughs> So I found, you know, a few CrossFit places and I would call and then I never got back, nobody ever got back to me. So yeah. I was like, all right, they're probably in the middle of a class, but I didn't want to just show up. So I was like, oh, this would be perfect. I can do what I need to yeah. in here, but not everywhere is like open. You know what I mean? So I was yeah. like, I'm not just going to like drive all the way over here and then like nobody be here. Yeah. And can I like, I, I know you said I can like drop in for a class. Like it says online, like drop in for a class, but like, can I just drop in? <laughs> yeah. So obviously, you know, call and see, but yeah, that would have like saved my ass for sure. Cause I was like, I need like, I was like maxi that week so I was like I need just like legit setup you know yeah. what I, mean? um, I yeah. don't really need anything else but yeah I didn't get back to me anyways yeah more carbs fueling for performance and electrolytes really really important especially I mean yeah. obviously it's gonna depend on where you live um, you know we're yeah. in Florida so we're sweating a lot more than probably everywhere else yeah but when I was when I first went across <laughs> it I was getting like the worst headaches oh my god and I, I couldn't figure out why but it's because I would I was just so dehydrated and mm -hmm. so depleted of electrolytes Students. And now I'm like, I do not mess with that because that those headaches would knock me out at like 6 p.m. for the rest of the day. Yeah, no, it's awful. I noticed yeah. that too with jujitsu, and I'm very sensitive like to electrolyte changes. Like as soon as I'm depleted, like instantly I get a headache. Like that's like yeah. my number one like side effect of that. So I I talk about this all the time, but like thermotabs are the tits. Like mm -hmm. the there's I so many like liquid IV. Well, no, I'm sure there, there's a million like way better brands, but yeah. these are super cheap because most of them are, easy to get down. are so expensive. Um, and this is like $8 for like a hundred. Yeah. So they're not fancy. They have no taste, but they get the job done. So that's what I'm all about. <laughs> and I just like pop two of those like before or after class and I just feel like so much better. Um, so, okay, like getting to actually train for the competition and like your experience there, like I just wanted to like round out the podcast with that because people listening might be thinking like, oh man, maybe I want to try something that is competitive, that's different than what I've ever done, but like, how long did you train before your first competition? Like, what can you kind of expect for that and your experience for the first and the second one you did? Yeah, so I think the cool thing about CrossFit is um, there are so many things to train for and you never know on competition day what's going to, you know, be presented as a workout. So you kind of need to be ready for everything all the time. So a few months out, typically, you know, we're just hammering everything, trying to maintain as much balance as we can. Most local competitions 
will announce their workouts about a month before. Oh, okay. That's yeah. nice. So about a month before we then, I've only done um, team competitions. Mm -hmm. I haven't been brave enough to do individual yet. I probably, hopefully will next year. Yeah, 2022, that's my goal. Woo. But um, so we typically will practice the workout at least once or twice a week or the workouts that are listed at least once or twice a week um, as a team. And so that is a good thing is, you know, a few months out from the competition, you're just kind of like, I don't know what I need to be ready for. So let me just be ready for, for anything and everything. But as you get closer, um, most competitions will announce, okay, you know, the first event will be a max clean and jerk. Second event will be 10 minute AMRAP of, you know, 10 toes of bar, 30 double unders, etc etc so then we would practice those over and over again um, to get ready for the competition but for the most part uh, it's just constantly being ready and well-rounded um, in all aspects of CrossFit because competitions always test for the three pillars of CrossFit mm -hmm. and um, how many events are or does that differ that differs uh, <laughs> there's a lot of one-day competitions we'll just do have three events there's two-day competitions that'll have up to five or six events if you watch you know the professional level of crossfit well, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> uh, professional level of crossfit those guys are like real pros so um those competitions will literally announce the workouts like two days before competition right so they always have to be ready yeah, yeah. but you know amateurs have like a whole month right <laughs> and, and so it's a lot what, with the better. one that i saw how many that felt like a lot of events that would be able to it how was many three was events that? really okay yeah it was just all day it was just all day <laughs> just, i all felt like it took forever sun. but <laughs> yeah all day in the sun and okay, it so it because it okay well i'm thinking one event but it really was like multiple things within one like yeah sandworm and then you had to go do something else and yeah something else like so it wasn't just like one thing like it was one event but there was multiple things within the yeah event. yeah it was a, a pretty like a long metcon in yeah. one event but there each event will have will try to have um a nice distribution of mm -hmm. each part of crossfit which is really cool in my opinion is you you really have to be a, a well-rounded athlete and it's like not good for your ego at all because it takes a long time to be good at three you know compartments and so yeah. that's also the exciting thing a lot of people say that their favorite thing about crossfit is like you can always get better mm -hmm. at a lot of different things and you never kind of really tap out whereas i know for me for powerlifting like i don't think i'll ever be able to deadlift over you know 300 pounds mm -hmm. maybe if i keep deadlifting at you it's know very specific, high level yeah, yeah for like another 10 years, I might hit mm -hmm. 310, you know, <laughs> whereas like... <laughs> but that's the reality of yeah, powerlifting. Yeah, naturally, at least. Um, yeah. But but even enhanced, you, they're going to hit a point right, where yeah. you just max out or, yeah. um, you know, you get injured and, you know, yeah. whatever it is. And obviously, like in CrossFit, that's also true with strength, but there's so many skills that mm -hmm. you can progress at that it feels like you're always getting better, which I really like. Yeah, and you're always kind of striving for an, another... Thing and yeah, it was yeah. really it was really cool. I had never been um, to an event because yeah, I had no you would have really liked the last one. Really, it was so cool. It was huge. It was an arena. There was oh, like a match. Much, that would have been much better. Oh yeah, it was <laughs> cool. My ass got fucking fried. Oh it, my god, it was freezing. <laughs> oh, and in my last one there was a swim event. So that's not. So oh, we were okay. we went to a pool and um, swimming was in it. So that that's like another cool thing. Yeah, just like oh shit, so many options. Yeah, for exercise racing. But, yeah, I remember yeah. I wore because um, it was like cloudy when we first got there. Yeah, and I wore this like tank top, but I had this like sports bra that had like all like one of those ones that has like all these straps in the back, and it was so cute oh. until I got fucking like. A lobster <laughs> yeah. and then we got yeah. back to the hotel and I took I was like oh my god yeah, this is like covered just, it was so bad <laughs> so bad the only tan lives I've had in like years <laughs> was like that one <laughs> yeah but it was totally worth it and it, it was just really cool to see like the whole event and like um it was just it was way more fun to like watch that in person than just like you know you can hear about it like yeah you had this little worm and then you guys were squatting it like but it's like it's really cool to like see everything and like um you know that's why going to events in person is so fun you know and like you can yeah. hear everybody cheering like honestly every event like, is like that like 
bodybuilding is like that, powerlifting is like that, cross like it's just they're all different. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, jiu jitsu is like that. It's just all they all have their different kind of components. Yeah. So even in competitions, which I like about CrossFit is there's different levels you can compete in. Mm-hmm. So there's beginner where it's pretty much just like the easiest movements, but competitively. And then there's intermediate, which is where I currently compete because I can't do a lot of RX movements, like ring muscle ups and things like that. And then there's obviously RX, which is like the most advanced of the advanced. Mm-hmm. What does that stand for? Um, prescribed. Yeah, prescribed. But yeah. Why is it like I was like I know what RX means, but like why? Um, because when you prescribe a workout, mm-hmm. RX is like the standard is how it's oh. supposed to be Got done, it. and okay. then the scaled version is how you need to modify it to be able to complete no. it. Okay. Got it. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, next year you think in next year is gonna be the next one? Yeah. Um, 2022, my goal is to compete individual. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay, we're we're, we're speaking it into existence. It's gonna happen. Everybody, get on Karina about doing her next competition. <laughs> Once the semester's over, and I'll be able to yeah, spend able more to time. Think. <laughs> yeah, some more time just training. I'll yeah, feel a lot maybe better. one in the spring or something. Yeah, but right now I'm just like focusing on oh. school and work. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> not not a good yeah. idea right now. But next semester for sure. Yeah. So yeah, I think this was a really good like deep dive into CrossFit if you guys have been thinking about it. Um, hopefully this answers some of those questions that you guys have um, about you know what to look for in a box and like how to get started and all that. So, you know, just again, I'll say it again, if you don't have a lot of background in, you know, these lifting type movements, you know, really just like take it slow. Find a gym that will understand that, see if there is additional coaching, um, do that kind of onboarding process, you know, really make sure that you're getting because not only are you going to put yourself at a risk for injury but you're not really going to be able to get a lot out of it you're not really going to be able to progress right. and then when you can't progress you get frustrated and you probably want to quit so think taking things slowly like really putting down some like foundational basics will help so much and you'll be able to progress a lot faster um so it's not just an injury thing it's also just like a competency thing because it's really frustrating yeah. especially with like a big compound lift something not even you know olympic lifting is a whole other thing but even just like the compound lifts like squatting deadlifting yeah. and pressing like it's really important to know how to do those things. Yeah. And those are hard for someone who hasn't been doing them yeah. for like 10 plus years, yeah. you know? Forever. <laughs> Forever, yeah. So, so taking that time to find the right gym um, and going slow is going to be really, really important. Fueling properly um, for this is essential. And then, you know, again, just finding the right place and the right split for you. So hope this was useful. If you guys have any other questions for us, you can visit teamlocofit.com. You can send us an email, check out our articles. Uh, apply for coaching, and then also sign up for our newsletter. So thank you guys, as always, for listening, and we'll talk to you next time.